Hello everyone, I'm Arthur Maria Schweidmann, I'm an assistant professor at TU Delft, and today I will give you a presentation on flow sheet recognition using deep convolutional neural networks. This is a presentation for the PSE 2021 Plus in Kyoto. The motivation of my talk is that today process design is currently a manual task. However, there have been a few initial advances in AI, artificial intelligence for process design, including the recognition of process patterns from uh, chemical flow sheets. There has been some previous work on process synthesis with group contribution methods from the group of Ghani. And there has also been more recent advances in process synthesis for reinforcement learning. However, what we see in different domains is that many successful AI applications are actually based on big data. For example, if we go to natural language translation, we see that these algorithms are trained on huge amount of data. If we now go to chemical engineering, we recognize that there's currently no big data on chemical processes. So what is big data on chemical processes? Well, if we talk about data for chemical processes, we likely talk about flow sheets. Why? Because flow sheets document and communicate the topological process information, control architectures, and so on. There exists almost one uh, flow sheet, or at least one flow sheet, for every chemical process in the world. And there exist several types of different process flow sheets, including PFTs, process flow diagrams, and PNIDs, process and instrumentation diagrams. As I mentioned earlier on, there exists a huge variety of flow sheets, uh, in particular at least one for every chemical process ever built or developed. Where can we find these flow sheets? Well, these flow sheets are commonly saved as PDFs, images, or printouts mostly not accessible to the public, but in the commercial domain, in internal public, uh, company reports, for example. However, some of the flow sheets are also available in the public domain, for example, in books, in scientific publications, and in patents. However, these flow sheets are currently not findable. So the question is, how can we identify, how can we find flow sheets in scientific publications? And to give you a number, at the moment we have about 2.6 million new publications in science and engineering every year. So there's a vast space where these um, flow sheets are actually hidden. And what I'd like to show you today is a methodology that we call flow sheet mining that helps us to identify chemical process flow sheets from the literature. And I'd like to walk you through our uh, methodology in the following, and then go into more details afterwards. So what we do is how do we start our flow sheet mining? Well, we start with a selection of journals, so ISSN numbers, essentially, of journals that are, um, yeah, that are in, within the chemical engineering domain. Then we need some kind of publisher API, an application interface from Elsevier, from Wiley, and so on, which is able to give us a list of DOIs, as well as a list of or a folder of PDF documents, including all the publications in a specific journal. What we do in the next step is we cut out all the images in these PDF documents, giving us a huge pile of images. And then what we need is some kind of algorithm, a classifier, that is able to tell us for a given image if it's a flow sheet or something else. So let's talk a bit in detail about what this image classifier looks like and what it's actually doing. 
So an image classifier for flow sheet recognition consists of a model, which is in most cases, and in our case, a convolutional neural network, which takes an image as an input, for example, on the left hand side is flow sheet image, and returns an output, which is a label for this image. In our case, this is a flow sheet. If we give this model something else but a flow sheet, it will return corresponding output, not a flow sheet. How does the model architecture of such a classifier look like? Um, well, what we did is we implemented a convolutional neural network based on a VGG16 architecture. And we implement that in PyTorch. And this is a relatively common architecture uh, that is used frequently for classification of images. What we did is we collected a training data set, including about 1,000 flow sheet images and 14,000 other images mined from publications. And as you can see, our flow sheet or our data set is a bit imbalanced. So what we did is we performed uh, a data augmentation technique, so cropping and stretching of the images in order to increase um, yeah, the number of flow sheet images for the algorithm. And we also applied a transfer learning approach to the convolution neural network that we used, has been pre-trained on a very common image classification task based on the image net data set before. And given that uh, we use a transfer learning approach, what we can see in our convergence plot is that from the first iteration of our training, so the first epoch, we get a relatively good accuracy on both the training and the validation set. And this accuracy increases a bit in the first few epochs, but we don't really need a lot of training iterations to train this algorithm. If you want to analyze the results of uh, a binary classifier, so a classifier able to differentiate between two different categories, actual flow sheet or not in flow sheet, what we usually do is we look at something that's called confusion matrix. So what we see is if we feed in, and this is a confusion matrix based on an independent test set, of course, uh, what we see is if we feed in actual flow sheets, uh, we get a relatively high number of true positive predictions. So the algorithm is detecting these as positives, in this case 151, um, while only 9 are categorized as false negative. Uh, and similarly, if we feed in anything else but a flow sheet, we get a relatively large number of true negative, about 2000 while the false positive are only 36. And that also is reflected in the accuracy of algorithm. So we have an accuracy of about 98%, uh, giving us an F1 score of 87%. So overall, you can see the accuracy of our binary classifier is relatively good. Um, just to give you some key numbers of when we applied this algorithm in a uh, in an actual setting. So what we consider in our approach is we looked at five publishers. We've considered about 230 journals. Um, and uh, the numbers you can see here are uh, our current results. So we're still operating the algorithm 24 seven on a server. We've currently about uh, 2 million publications. Uh, however, it's important to note that there is even more publications in these 230 journals. It's just that we haven't downloaded all of them. And so far we have extracted about two or 1.87 million figures uh, from these publications. Again, these algorithms are currently running. So there is more figures to be extracted from the publications and there's more publications to be extracted from the journals. Uh, so far we have classified about 400,000 of these images into the two categories, flow sheets and not flow sheets. Uh, to show you some of the results, um, let's look at three journals and I put in one book publication here as well. So on the left hand side, you see that in the journal Computers and Chemical Engineering, we have so far identified about 2,500 flow sheets. In the journal Chemical Engineering Science, a bit less. 
in Ullmann's Encyclopedia of Industrial Chemistry, we have identified about 500 flow sheet images. And then in uh, combustion and flame, we have a few hundred images. Um, so these numbers are interesting because they reflect the total number of flow sheets that we have so far mined from these publications, uh, from these journals or books. Uh, a bit more interesting is maybe the percentage of flow sheet images per total number of images. And we see that in computers and chemical engineering, about 4.5% of the images are actually flow sheets. Uh, and this number is much lower in different journals. So for example, chemical engineering science has about 1% uh, of the images are actually flow sheets. Um, so now that we have mined these images and we keep mining and accumulating these images from pro sheets, the question is what do we do next with these images? Well, there's one difficulty. Um, the images are still not machine readable. So if you actually want to get this findable, interoperable, fair data um, for chemical process flow sheets, uh, we need to identify the structure, the topology of the flow sheets. And that's the work we are currently working on. So it just gives you a small preview. Uh, we currently work on the digitization of flow sheets. Uh, so we work on object detection algorithms able to identify different categories of unit operations from images. And you can see here just an example of how that can look like. And we also work on the identification of the connectivity of these flow sheets. With that, I'd like to come to the conclusion of my talk already. Um, so what I showed you today is that currently chemical flow sheet data is not yet findable and of course also not fair in a fair data sense. Data mining can be used to automatically recognize flow sheet images. The algorithm that I've shown you achieves a very high accuracy of 98%. Um, this flow sheet mining pipeline that I showed you collects thousands of flow sheets, and I believe there's much more to come. And we believe that making flow sheet, chemical flow sheet data fair is an enabler technology for future AI developments. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time and attention. And I'm happy to answer questions in the session. Thanks a lot.